Hey everyone, welcome to Fan Service. Today we're going to be crashing down here at Rooster Teeth Expo. Chris, Rachel, and I are going to try to wait in a couple lines for a couple hours. And, Talk uh, to a few people, eight or so. Yeah. Bring you some exciting things from some guests that you only know because you love the internet. Go internets! Yay! And there's no cats here anywhere, so I think that's, we're we'll out to fix that. Hmm. Stay tuned I don't for know, Fan Service. I head over there. Oh, let's go. My name is Commander Shepard, and Fan Service is my favorite show on the internet. Hi there, I'm Chris Rachel Lusen with Fanboy TV. I'm Gavin with Fanboy TV, and we're here with Jen Taylor, Miss Cortana That's herself. Me. Um, just real quick, can you say some Cortana lines for me? Oh, can you give me some of them? <laughs> like, say, Master Chief, I need you now. Master Chief, I need you now. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hello. like. Interviews with fanboys devolve into this very Well, that's because okay. I'm not a huge Halo fan. I'm a Time Splitters fan. Okay. But Cortana was the only character. That's the only toy I have is a little light-up Cortana action figure. I I, she's it. the only thing I really liked about Halo, to be completely honest Did with you. Did you bring it with you? No. Uh, my I son's playing signed with it. it. That would have been awesome. But, like, my son is a huge Halo fan. And What do you think draws people to Halo, in your own opinion? I have to believe that it's story the story mm -hmm. we fall in love with the characters don't we i mean i hope yeah. <laughs> i hope that's I what it is that. I mean, rtx everything rooster teeth is, uh, does is based on the whole idea like people love this so much they want even more backstory for the characters right right i think that they created some compelling characters and the gameplay i understand is awesome mm -hmm. as well though i what do you mean you, i have, understand have you never played the game i have and this is what i can make master chief do and then I get stuck. I can't move forward. I, you guys are awesome. I can't figure out how to move the thing. It's I laugh stupid. because I can, I'm okay at it, but my son, he's seven. He is like a brilliant genius at it. Mm -hmm. And we have a friend that does machinimas. And so we have to be body actors. I can't go. Oh, I can see, that's all I can do. Wall. You and I should play together. I'll we look should. up and we down. Totally you can be the most <laughs> awesome team ever. You know, like we thought about joining that little Halo World tournament down there. Oh, we would yeah. suck totally. And oh. just be like, Todd Slither's rules and rock away. <laughs> that would probably not get you a lot of fans <laughs> down there, but. So you've done voice acting not just for Halo, but for a ton of other things. Yeah. You have an exciting IMDb, IMDb page you can check her out there. We did our research. Oh, yes. right. High quality internet research. I should check it out. Before. Uh, <laughs> how did you get involved in voice acting to begin with? I really stumbled into it. Uh, I'm a, I was a, trained as a theater actor. And you don't make a lot of money doing theater. And uh, a friend of mine was working at a kids radio station and said, you know, I think you'd be really good at this. They're asking us to do fun, silly, crazy voices. And you can do a lot of different characters. You should come down and audition. And I did. And that was the beginning. It's it's kind of shocking because you're a lovely woman. And I think of voice actresses as mostly being like people that are kind of past their, like they're no longer that as young. They're kind of past their prime. But like, um, uh, you had it right. You were beautiful. And yeah. So much uh, no, no. Oh, no, exactly the opposite. Most voice actresses are that I'm familiar with are a good 20 or 30 years older than you are because they're not getting the TV roles as much. Um, what made you decide to go straight into voice once you got, like, were you just stuck there for a while? Or was like, hey, no, you know, you're I, too I, pretty to be a voice I, actress I is what it. I'm saying. Got <laughs> You know, I used to be a radio DJ, and we would say, you've got a face for radio. That was our saying. Um, you know, I do film. I do stage work. I do TV when I can get it. I live in Seattle, and so that, those, those are the opportunities. Um, in Hollywood, you know, you're going to have more opportunity to do film and TV and whatnot. But in Seattle, there's theater and there's voice work, and it was a part of making a living to pay for my um, theater that addiction. Rent. That th yes. Yeah. And my theater addiction, you know, which again, you don't get paid very much. Um, and it became something else. It became something I was, that I'm passionate about. And it's a way to tell stories using just, I mean, I can be anybody. I can play an older lady. I can play a little kid. I can, one of my first jobs, I think I played a baseball glove <laughs> and I was fabulous. 
So what has been your favorite voice acting role so far? Um, I have to say Cortana only because... You're at RTX and people will feel... No, like no, 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 no. <laughs> because I've known her for so long and I've become so familiar with her and I'm kind of in love with Cortana. She's, you know, uh, uh, somebody that I... A character that I know better than than any of them. Well, maybe you can answer this or not. And she's is, fine. What? Is she, for somebody who's not real, she is. Is she going to be in the new Halo game on the Xbox One? I can't tell you because I didn't write the game. I know. It's a wonder, isn't it? Shocking. I don't what? know if it would be the same. <laughs> Shocking. You don't know if it would be the same without Cortana? Yeah. No, it wouldn't. It's, it's, like, it's like the companion. It's the constant companion. It's the constant companion. Always there. I like keeping to think that. Check. And Listen it's up, just fun. people. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to be in the new Halo game. <laughs> This is nice. Yeah. So what is your favorite part that no one has ever heard of? Like something that you did that you're like, this is great. Why isn't this more popular? Other than the baseball the glove. The baseball glove. I was really fabulous as the baseball glove. You know what I did? One of the first things I did was a computer game for kids back in the day where I was this little girl named Sunny Day who um, emceed little kids playing baseball and basketball and soccer. This is Sunny Day. I thought I was fabulous. It was one of my first jobs. Yeah, I think that. Go check it out. Backyard baseball. I don't know if you can even buy these anymore. <laughs> yes, actually you can. It's a you whole can? backyard sports series. You can. See, the very first ones, that was me. I'm sure it's somebody else now. But. It's probably like on Windows 2000. I don't think it's going to play Yeah, anymore. right? Maybe yeah. you can't play it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. And of course. It was fun, and I look forward to hearing more of you. And I should have brought my toy, but my son's going to well, die that I got to talk to Cortana. Yeah, good. I hope not. Well, yeah, I'm not die-die, <laughs> but, you know, he's going to be so excited. So, thanks. Yes, it was of fun. course. Thanks. It was nice to meet you guys. Oh, hi. Hey, what's your name? Paige. Uh, so, is this your first RTX? Yes. Since there's been two of them. You could have all already been yeah. three, right? Yeah, this is the third one. So, what made you decide to come out to RTX? I've been wanting to go for three years and just now could afford it. Really? Uh-huh. Where did you come here from? Kansas City. Oh, so she actually drove to be here. What's your favorite thing about being here? Not the lines. Not really? Really? Because that line over there uh, speaks to me. No, I can get into that line to wait in line, so I'm in the line waiting to get into the line to wait in line. You yeah. know, the line ride is my favorite part. Like the line ride and the escalator ride, that's what I came for. Hi there, I'm Chris Rachel Ozen with Fanboy TV. And I'm Gavin with Fanboy TV as well. And I'm Mike from Loot Crate. And we are here to tell you about the wonder that is Loot Crate because I'm kind of obsessed. I didn't even know about it until you posted about it. I was like, you get a box of stuff? A box of awesome stuff. So I found out about these exciting things because I also run Kitchen Overlord and I'm doing all these uh, subscription boxes for food. And I thought, well, isn't there one for nerds? Uh... We are the savior of the nerds. It's true. So tell people what they actually get in an exciting loot crate. So every month we curate six to eight items around a theme and we send you a box full of those items. Oh. We do... Funko Pop Vinyls, we do t-shirts, we do, uh, we've done, you know, content with, uh, like, Bic and whatnot, and... Okay, ignore the Bic part, that's not the exciting thing. That's not that exciting, The exciting cool part, pen, it, it is a yeah. cool pin, but it's not as cool as opening up the box and seeing a Hitchhiker's Guide towel. Towel for the Hitchhiker's Guide, and it made me happy inside. <laughs> Happy. That's what made you happy inside? A towel? Yes, that's all it takes. Some days, I'm, I'm not easy. All it takes is a towel. I'd have been happy with the pen. I was like, oh, look, I can write now. You would have to be literate first. <laughs> Details. Technicalities. All right, so why did you decide to start Loot Crate? Uh, well, it started over a year ago, and it was uh, our co-founders were just kind of, it was at LA Startup Week, and they were just looking for something to kind of get going, and he had had a previous company that was like uh, geared towards geeks and gamers, and he decided to kind of like take the subscription model that has been for food, you know, beauty products for women, yeah. all kinds of stuff, and tailor towards the geeks and gamer culture. Because they don't have it. It's no. like you get, you know, to get the stuff you can get in the crate, you kind of have to go to cons. And if you can't go to a con because there's not one nearby, you can't Or do you much. just haven't had your fix for a convention yeah, in a exactly. couple of months. It's nice to get a present every month. It's it like is. It's like Geek Santa has come to your house once a month. So that's what I thought. I was like, I could give myself a gift every month and be a surprise. And I love the fact that before taxes, it spells leet with the yeah, price. <laughs> Not like they would have done that on purpose or anything. Um, so what's what, how did you guys start picking some of the items to go into the loot crates? We kind of pick a theme ahead of time, and then we kind of find things that best fit that theme. And as we started to grow, companies have started to come to us and be hey, we want to put something in the crate. And so we'll be like, okay, we can do this, and we can match it with this and this, and build a crate around that now. 
And the, uh, the next step, which actually is the July crate, is we now have an influencer curating the crate. So all the items, not all of it, but majority of the items in the crate will be something picked by that influencer. So when you say influencer, can you give us a hint who this person is uh, for the next one? He is Freddie Long. Okay, yeah. awesome. Awesome, well done. So if you're a fan of Rocket Jump or any of the Freddy W channel stuff, you'll be picking stuff that is for video game high school. That's fantastic. Yeah. Do you ever take submissions from just your subscribers? Like say, I want a Time Splitters theme loot crate. Or yes, something completely do. weird. No, um, we can, you just, you can email us anytime and let us know. We take all the suggestions and we kind of like have a database of information of like what people kind of want. Our plan is down the line to maybe do more, uh, just genre based crates so you can be like instead of just on top of your monthly subscription you can be like well we're going to have just a doctor who crate that you can order special order and we'll only make as many as we want so what is so from the submissions you've gotten what has been the weirdest theme you've gotten so far bronies oh no <laughs> sorry we we have some bronies we have bronies people um who would be delighted if you did well, a if we, if we get to that point, we can do just a special brony crate. Uh, <laughs> now, make sure they all have series accurate hair because that's why bronies don't buy those toys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> True story. Told to us. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Oh, are, are, we, are we mounting a pony? Is that what we're all doing? Yeah, we're mounting a pony. We're having a sheep. Hey everybody, we're at RTX right now, riding the L Escalator ride. The Escalator yeah. ride is my absolute favorite ride here. It's Although, really the lamest theme park I've ever been to. The line to get here was like two hours and it just wasn't worth it. You know, I really prefer a four to six hour line. That way you really get to know the people that are directly in front and directly behind you. I, you know, I haven't found any other rides here. I was expecting it to be a little bit more I wanted the teacups. Themed. You know, I, really, would have been I awesome. wanted the guns. I thought there was going to be a gun ride, like where I'd just be straddling a gun no, no, and riding no. it and shooting bullets at You do not need people. a gun because you come to try to shoot me, and that's not happening. You say that as though that's a bad thing. He says that as though I've never shot it's him not a bad thing. It is a bad thing for me because I like being alive. You know what? We'll clone you and bring out a new one. You do not need two of me. The world will end. I'm but if the first awesome. one's dead, that won't be a problem. I am Michael. Michael? Did you come here from Canada like the guy over there that made straight A's? Uh, yes. Did you come here from Canada well, and make straight A's? I came here from Florida, but I'm from Canada. Does that count? I don't know. I made straight B's. Does that make you like an ice pack, just like breaking in to get to oh, Florida? Oh, God. Um, maybe. Maybe. So what made you guys decide to come out to RTX? It's um, awesome, and I love it. Pretty much. Here. I love Rooster Teeth. I think when I saw the post about the Ruby reveal, that's when I was like, okay, I need to come here. And then just... Get every, everything done. Like that's the one thing that was like the catalyst, I guess you want to say, to get me to come here. And then after, okay, like, hey, now I got to do all this too, this, 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 this. <laughs> Have you been able to do a fraction of the things that you wanted to? Because there, there've been some yeah. slightly yes. epic lines. I haven't been able to get like bigger panels. I couldn't get to Geeks Who Drink last night. Yeah. I couldn't get into the Master Pancake Theater because they were both full. But everything else, yeah, it's been pretty awesome. I got to play Sad's Creed. That was awesome. Oh, I managed, wow. congratulations! Yeah, I was like first. I managed to get into. It. Two panels that I actually wanted to see yesterday, which were the VGHS panel and the movie panel. But then today, I pretty much just been standing in line for signatures. Got all these. The <laughs> nice. one, the one that I missed was uh, actually. Ta-da! The one that I missed, I was actually Bernie's. My my friend managed to get that one yesterday. So it's like, oh, I have all so you're these. Just gonna photocopy it. And yeah, I'm probably just gonna do that. Just like take a picture. I just started on my signature today. Hi there, I'm Chris Rachel Oslin with Fanboy TV. We are lucky enough to have live prude girls on here with us. I'm wondering if they're really gonna be prude or not. I don't know. Are they live? I haven't seen them. Have you? I haven't seen them yet either. I think they're right here. Somewhere. I think they need to come sit next to us. Can our I think they need to sit very, them? very close to us. Oh, hey, look who they are. Hey. Hello. Hi. Squeeze on in. Get you over. Hi there. Sorry about my dress being wet. It's mostly because of you. Is it because you peed yourself? Uh, it was because I was so excited you were coming. I don't understand. It's How does awesome, that work? Right? How does that work? Stevie, can you explain to her about moisture and ladies? Do you have some blue wiper fluid that Do you can really pour out on something? Do we really talk about moisture and ladies on TV right now? I don't think so. See, it's so nice having a boy on the show. I know, right? Then. I'll do all your thinking for you. Thank you. <laughs> this hurts my butt. You know, we do have another chair that you're allowed to sit on that isn't pre-moistened by me. Great. I'm going to stay in the couch. You should. My good friend. Because we're awesome. <laughs> That's true. I really appreciate you showing your back. So many people are afraid to show their back to the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, guys. 
check it out. Wow. Do you have bra strap showing with that? Maybe. <gasps> wow. Can you get a tiny bit of back fat? Oh, I don't know if you can. I don't even what? have enough. What? Of like back fat? Maybe you could do fake some back fat? Do an over the shoulder, like oh, portrait. Oh, like yeah. your hair is blown in the wind? That's awesome. Sexy portrait time. Yeah. So, would you mind sitting over here in the chair? Because sure. you know what they don't see enough of? Me. And we're putting baby in the corner for this interview. Nobody, yeah, sorry baby. Nobody puts corner. minty baby in the corner. So I was wondering, since you ladies are incredibly popular in the world of the internets that I've heard so much What is this yeah. internets? Oh, you want to start with that? Internets, no. It's a series of tubes, and you told us to stop talking about lady parts. Yes, because I don't want to talk about lady parts. They make me uncomfortable. You're a baby. I know, it's true. Right? Um, so, how did you guys get started with Live Crude, Crude Girls? Um, well, I wanted to be famous and rich. Yeah, I understand. Is it working that. for you so far? So yeah. far, we're on our way. Yeah. Can you be my sugar mama? I don't have enough money to support myself right now. So it's and not she's not then. actually made out of sugar, despite looking very petite and dainty. My Prius is named Sugar Shaker. Is it? Do you actually make it shake its taillights at people? Yeah. As you should. My you Prius were that person is named that was stuck in traffic. I don't drive <laughs> out here. I don't drive in Austin. Okay, fine. Don't worry. So you actually have some genuine real world credits that are not involved with the internet. You've been on real shows like ER. Um, do they ever look at you funny and say, I'm sorry, really? I, we saw what else you do in your spare time. What do you mean by that? Um, do people judge you for being a live prude girl? No, people love that I'm a live prude girl. Do they ever accuse you of being a dead prude girl? That would be awesome. No. Have they ever mistaken you for being an undead prude girl? Like some vampire fangs or even a zombie thing going on? No. Really? I think, your dog? I think she could pull off the zombie thing. Although, with your eyes that big, you might be able to pull it off well, too. You could paint teeth all along the sides. I prefer to play a cat. Really? If you're going to be undead, you're just going to play a cat. A kitten. I uh, an undead that. kitten. Yeah. She's really good at making meow sounds. Really? Ooh, can you demonstrate? Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a cat needing to eat. Like, outside of your door scratching, what then? Because, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I like that that's too. Mad Cat. Mad Cat. Quality programming. This is why you tune into Fanboy TV. You're wasting your time. Um, so, <laughs> thank God this isn't mine. <laughs> You're wasting your time. It came from her, so it must be true because she's awfully hot. <laughs> um, I need to rethink my career path. Did you say it came from her? It's true because she's hot? Yeah. It's just a sweat issue, really, at this point in time. Yeah. She's got her arm around I'm, uh, him. I'm, so I run hot. That's why I'm leaning so far forward, just the radiation uh, coming Stevie, off of her right now. I feel bad that I'm sitting in this really comfortable chair and you're stuck between those people. Oh, I don't mind. Okay. I feel like... Wait, 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 wait. You call us people like we're lower than you? Well, you know, those people. Those people. Yeah. The emphasis you know, is on the those. White people. Uh, I do glow in the dark. I can't help the fact that sometimes I'm see-through, okay? Hey, Need Chris. color. Chris Rachel, yes. Chris Rachel? Yes. I was calling you Chris for short. Yeah, some people you do, can't that, do that. And then I will actually box their heads and ship them to their families. Oh, can I it's call happened. you Chrissy Food? Sure, why not? It's still two words. Um, hey, Chrissy Food. Yes, darling. I really like your hair color. Thank you. It's actually four hair colors. Yeah, yeah it is. The mm -hmm. ombre of it is really awesome. I paid someone a stupid amount of money to make that happen. Yeah, it's great. Why? Because I'm on the internet. Too. You know what? You know what I would call your hair color? What? Tequila Sunrise. I like it. I like it. Mostly people call it, oh my god, is she on fire? Yeah. So, yeah. Mostly uh, because it used to be long hair and then there was an accident. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, that happened accident? to me once. Hmm? I might have on fire one time. Really? Yeah, on my bar mitzvah. Congratulations! Thank you. I, I was, I mean, it was a while ago, but I went to blow out my candles and my hair caught on fire. And I didn't notice it, and my mom put it out with her hand. <laughs> And, um, That's epic parody. And I, I have it, yeah, she's a great mom. And then I saw it in the video, I didn't actually see it. Oh, so you didn't even realize until afterwards? Yeah. Awesome. Now her mom commits a lot of crimes now because she has no fingerprints. Yeah, so it's convenient. That's convenient. We should totally do that. We should borrow Why her mom. Wait, have you guys not burned up her fingerprints? Not yet. I, I kind of need I them have sometimes. None. I have no fingerprints. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, she's just really warm. She used to have so. really cute fingerprints, and then she burned them They were kit imprints. Oh. But you could pods. probably just etch new ones in there, like with a soldering iron or something. Yeah. You have Why small you hands. That? I do. I have almost tiny baby-like hands. Are you a Pisces? No. Are you Virgo? No. Are you Capricorn? No. Scorpio? Yes. Wow, four times a charm. <laughs> you guys are psychic. That is my second time when you choose a water sign. Because I'm actually covered in this. 
Oh no, she's we're just going to keep rolling for a little bit. It's true. It's true, I am. So, with the excitement that is Live Fruit Girls, what is your favorite celebrity interview that you're like, wow, I really wasn't looking forward to this one, but he turned out to be awesome. Or she turned out to be awesome. I don't think I've ever not, not looked forward, forward to, to one. Yeah. Really? There haven't been any of them like, God, I'm just going to get through today. No. That was probably today for them. Well, right, like yeah. this interview. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Pretty bad. It's, it's yeah. it is. This is just horrible. Uh, so who's that, who would be among your favorites that you were looking forward to? Then? Um, Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bj Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. Bob Odenkirk is was a dream. He's an amazing person. Yeah. So uh, where's your little dog? What? At home. At home. I Where to they put the dog around like he was a There's football. There's two it dogs. Goes between stuff. You know, Pete, I would hate you. I don't really Peter care about Peter. Him. Yeah. I'm kind to animals. Only. You have to put them on TV. That's as many as you can get for animals because they get that internet celebrity like Grumpy Cat and everyone wants to touch them and they got to no, go No, no one country. touches my dogs. No, no we, that's why we don't take them to places yeah, like we, this. We're not cruel to animals. They say that don't now. roll your eyes at us. The only thing we take oh, seriously. Oh, I'm sorry, did you see that? Yes. He thought that he was invisible because of the brim of his cap. It's, you know, it just covers like this part of your face, right? He thinks his eyes are actually in his hairline. I mean, I'm fine with not seeing your face, as long as you're fine with not. I want to get you in it further in this hat. I don't know. I've got a really big head. It doesn't fit the hat very well, so yeah, no. it's about as good as it goes. So we should come up with some relevant questions to ask them about their show. What do you, what do you think about relevant questions? <laughs> I think we're having a good time. I just feel. Let's do this. Okay. Let's pretend like we're having a real conversation, uh -huh. and you want to know about me, and then we'll talk about that. It doesn't even have to be about the show. I think, I think this is yeah. a trick. I, I, think, it, I, I think it is a trick. It's yeah. not a trick. Ask us questions. We'll answer them. Yeah, we'll really answer them. So, is it true that your underwear are actually made out of out of dra dragon's teeth? No. Really? No, they're made they're made out of cotton. That's really boring. Mine are made out of fruit loops. Yeah, that's how you got a sticky ass. Is it, it true like that when you were egg. born, not only were you hatched out of a giant egg, but you were actually six foot seven and had to pay a genie to shrink you down to being a petite, adorable size for media? No. Man, the internet lies about everything. Go is figure. there anything on the internet that is true about you? Yeah, like I'm a woman, I have a YouTube show, Stevie's my best friend, we travel around. We're in, We're currently in Austin. Mm -hmm. We are currently in Austin for RTX 2013. Ooh. Um, strangers gave me this bracelet. Do you normally take jewelry from strangers? Yeah. If they give it to me. Yeah, why wouldn't I? Note to self or note to the internet. Give her jewelry. I mean, it doesn't mean I'll hang out with you, but I'll take the jewelry. That's true. Do you actually mug people for jewelry if you just really like it and then try and pretend later that they just gave it to you? No. We're law-abiding citizens. Um, yeah, we're like actually nice. With no people. fingerprints, go figure. Mm -hmm. That's how they're law-abiding, because they can't get caught. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What did you go to school to do? Animate. Cool. Why don't you do that? Because... I like doing what I'm doing, and what everything doing? changed. What is this? TV. Considered? Oh, cool. Yeah. You want to be a host? I am a host. Right. At least I try to be a host. Right. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. It just depends on the day. What about you? Did you go to college? Yeah, I've got a graduate degree. In what? Uh, in history, which is why I'm a journalist now. Oh, Where'd awesome. you go? Um, lots of places, actually. Cool. Yes, I've lived in, in different cities now. Really? Yep. Where do you live now? I'm here in Austin. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Austin is amazing. Yeah, we co-host a Saturday show, and then I've got a... Uh, Dollar Store Drinks YouTube she show. She cooks. Cool. Oh, you cook? Uh, I wrote the Doctor Who cookbook, and I've got a Walking Dead one coming up, and a wow. Settlers of Catan one coming up. Oh, that's so fun. Your life seems so fun. What a great way to mix your, like, natural abilities in your, like, creative juices. And make some money off the internet while I'm at it. Yeah. yeah. We haven't quite figured out how to make money off the internet. I, I make it off of the cookbooks. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe we should write a cookbook. You should. You should totally yeah. write a cookbook. I have no... I would Stevie read wrote a haiku book. I oh. Did. It's What's not haiku for cats? No, it's called Hardcore Haiku. It's not out. I released it once and then I like retracted it because I have I'm adding a few. Okay. But it's like haikus that are just a little bit inappropriate. And they're really funny. They're like really funny. And it's she fun. she decorated all the pages. Yeah. She, I scanned them in. <laughs> she like yeah. She's a really good artist. And so she put she would, it would build these things and then scan them with her scanner like 3D objects. Yeah. 
and then do that. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we got to sit down and randomly chat with you guys about yeah. cats and the internet and rooster teeth. This has been my most fun and least directed interview of the day, and we're doing eight of them today. Oh, yeah. yeah. shit. Yes. You got your work cut out for you. Maybe we should leave so you can start it. I, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's so, right, just off the couch now. I'm pretty sure that guy over there has some sparkly stuff you can take from him. It's time for you guys to go. Oh. All right, bye. Oh, they're taking the couch. Bye. I'm not leaving. I'm just hanging out with these guys. They're fun. No, you are leaving. You go. Bye. It's time for you to leave. But you have to go now. Fine. You guys do what you're going to do. We will. Do it. All right. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Let's Talk About Something More Interesting. We're excited to welcome our special guest, Christopher. Best of luck next time, you know? Okay. Hi, what's your name? I'm Jaleel. I'm Chris Rachel. I'm still with Fanboy TV. Jaleel, is this your favorite line you've been in today? Yeah. Really? Uh, about favorite line. Get a uh, signature from Joel and Barbara. Is that what makes the line special, or is it just the long wait that makes each line special? Yeah, it gets me what I need to get to and to get what I want to get. So what is the longest line you've been in so far? Uh, had to be... This one's been pretty long, but there was a other one. The, the, no, the Chiba Hut line was longer. Then I had to get kicked out of that line because they cut the line out. Oh, so you weren't kicked out from mm. violence or something. You didn't just get to the front and say, MINE IS THE GREATEST ACHIEVEMENT! <laughs> no, no, not this time. Uh, not this time. Well, you know for next time. Yes. You need a reason to be kicked out of line instead of just, you know, not being at the front. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Jaleel. No problem. I don't even know what line we're in. I think it's to like buy something. I don't, this is my favorite though. It actually has some carpeting. Yeah. Quality lines. I know. Um, I'm not sure what we were in line for. I don't know. Maybe it's a signature. We'll see. Hey everyone, this is Gavin with Fanboy TV. I'm out here with Chris Rachel Olson at the Rooster Teeth Expo. Say hi, Chris. <laughs> hi, everybody. We are out here interviewing, uh, what's your name again? David Gates with Osiris Studios. And we're super excited because David's actually producing an amazing looking steampunk game. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure, so Mist of Stagnation, it's a uh, first person shooter RTS hybrid. The core gameplay is going to be the first person shooter side of things where your team is going after control points that are going to capture uh, resources for your team. The RTS side is the commander, which is a huge mech that's actually out in the uh, first person playable world, and he's going to use those resources to upgrade your, uh, your team's weapons, your armor, and all that. So you just decided to be complicated and harden yourself to play in two genres that don't go together. You might as well throw in some tower defense in there. I completely disagree with that. Steampunk goes with everything. No, I'm talking about his... Uh... I'm talking about the first-person shooter and the RTS aspects. Those are two completely different game types. You're like, oh, let's put them together and make work on ourselves. Well, I figure, you know, they're the two my two favorite game modes, so I might as well just play one game instead of two. So what is your favorite real-time strategy game? So RTS, this is uh, only the older guys are going to know this one, older guys and gals, but uh, Dune for uh, way back in the day. Dune? Dune. You yeah. got a Dune fan right here. Yep. No, you mean Dune, D-U-N-E, not D-O-O-M. I thought you were just no, slurring no. Dune. Nope. Really? <laughs> there you go. I'm sorry. As we all know, I have an irrational love of all things Dune. Tell me more about... <laughs> I've made entire sandworms at home, so tell me more about how Dune inspired you with this. So, it's very steampunky. I mean, that was yeah. steampunk before it was steampunk, yeah. you know, yeah. so um, absolutely that aspect of it, mm. part of the design process, but as far as, like, the gameplay part, uh, you know, it brings back the whole, your units interacting with you. Uh, in Dune, they're all NPCs, so you don't actually get to control them. But technology uh, has improved, and now exactly. we can make it better. So now, yeah, all the characters down there, they... Uh, they can follow your commands or, or choose not to. So uh, the main inspiration behind the game was to, to create something that inspired and uh, encouraged teamwork amongst uh, the team. Do you have any crazy Dune references? Like, does anyone have to put their hand in a box? Does someone <laughs> come out in an inappropriate uh, thong at some point in time? Uh, you know, Easter eggs are always a possibility and stuff like that. But uh, right now... He's just now, trying to get me yeah. to play the game right now. That's <laughs> right. all that's going on. It's uh, all Dune references in the whole <laughs> game. But no, it's... Uh, we're We're mainly focusing on the, the core elements right now. We're still pretty early in development. Uh, we're early alphas right now. A uh, couple months from now, right around uh, PAX Prime time, we're going to be in uh, full-on beta. So. so you decided to make a steampunk-based game. Why not like a futuristic sci-fi shooter or 
one of the yeah, other bajillion yeah. going yeah. around. Or one of the other bajillion, like, <laughs> steampunk seems to be kind of coming into its own, but you also verge on that point of it becoming a little too commercial. Like, how are you going to balance all that out to make sure that, you know, you don't offend steampunk enthusiasts who are like, well, this is how, like, I didn't know there was a culture and an etiquette to steampunkery. Oh, yeah. but don't shake your head at me. <laughs> Why don't you let him answer yeah. this exciting <laughs> question? So, with steampunk, we took a very... Uh, specific approach to it so instead of what you see in most games right now when it comes to calling a game steampunk they use the fantasy steampunk where they have you know slap some copper some some leather and some gears on something and, and now it's steampunk what we're doing is called uh, practical steampunk so everything serves a purpose if there's actually gears on something it's because you know it actually turns something else which like our I huge think I max, love him now our huge mechs actually uh, people are loving the the detailed animations because Beneath his breastplate, there's a, a huge gear that connects to his waist, and when he turns, it turns. So I mean, it's all it's all set up to be uh, realistic. So when you look at some of our inspirations, such as like Bioshock and uh, Mad Max, um, you know, it's all taking what you have available to you and then turning that into something that you can use. Tell me, there's a Thunderdome scene. <laughs> so one of the levels that we actually. Uh, are starting to conceptualize right now is actually based on the Thunderdome City. That's awesome. I'm so ready to play this. And I believe you said that our exciting viewers might be able to get in on your beta. Absolutely. She talked me into it and uh, we'll be hooking Come up. Come on, Dune and Thunderdome. Why would you not want to play this game? Chris Rich can talk anybody into anything, just so you know. That's how she got on the show. Hey. Right? <laughs> I can't She's do like, it. Yes, look for and. Like, mm. <laughs> um, anything else? You decided to put giant mechs in this game? Right, so that's That's one not of, very steampunky. That's well, when more you see like, them, hey, mecha, anime, let's go. When you see these mechs, you'll uh, you'll completely uh, do a 180 on that. So, actually, this is one of them on our shirt here. So. Yeah, keep staring yeah. at it. <laughs> and on top so. of that, anything can be made steampunk. There's a steampunk Boba Fett. I mean, come on. There's steampunk Care Bears. There are steampunk Care Bears because some of us need to have our childhoods ruined. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. I don't know why. People just like to destroy the environment. I don't know why. Is there anything that can be done other than just blowing up the planet and starting over from scratch? You know, I'm doing my best. I just ask people to recycle, you know, don't waste water. But I just, I can't get through to them and they make fun of me. Or they throw water balloons at me. So if we happen to know an evil overlord somewhere that was planning to actually, oh, say, destroy the entire human race and give it back to the rest of the animals, would you be against them? Uh, no. I, all, the humans are part of the planet. Oh. We have to learn to live in harmony. Well, remember that you said that when the time comes, Captain Planet. Hi there. I'm Chris Rachel Oslin with the Austin Post. And I'm Gavin with Fanboy TV, and we're here with... Monty. And we are lucky. You know, I feel horribly underdressed, Monty. If I realized it was going to be a formal wear interview, I would have at least gotten out a halfway decent way. I don't know if this counts as formal wear as much as it does count as bizarre. <laughs> Around our career, that's formal wear, trust me. <laughs> you, you got out the wig and the eyeliner. That's really all that counts. Yeah, yeah. So you have been with Rooster Teeth for a good while now. Almost four years. It's Which, a long time. Yeah. What did, yeah. You start, what did you start out doing? I started out... How far back do we go? I mean, I Four years. Well, oh, once oh, upon oh, a time, okay. he was a tiny egg that hatched into a giant human being. <laughs> as I journeyed through the... Anyways. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get that description. As I, um, I started out in season eight of Red vs. Blue. Uh, they wanted to mix things up, so I kind of... I mean, I'd, I'd known Rooster Teeth for a long time. I've been a fan since season one. Um, and they're really good about hiring from within the fan community. That's right. Uh, in fact, after I had made Haloid, the Halo Metroid video... They had called me, uh, and we had a conversation, but at that same time, I was being scouted by several, several game companies who wanted to hire me as well. But I was, I was down to talk with the Rooster Teeth guys. I was such a fan. 
And I thought they were just calling me to just be like, what's up? Hey, that was cool. But it turns out that seven years ago, they were trying to hire me, and I didn't realize it. <laughs> wow. I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, but at the time I had started. Were they just too casual about it? I guess so, yeah. They were hey, just... maybe you want to come work or not? No, yeah, I, did, I guess I didn't hear it, mostly because I was, you know, I was already on my way to, uh, you know, big, big, big shot video game jobs. Uh -huh. But um, I find out, like, five years later, after meeting up with Bernie Burns again, uh, we met for the first time at that San Diego Comic Con that year. But um, I found out five years later, yeah, that we were trying to hire you five years ago. And I was I was I was finishing up a game at the time, and uh, it just so happened that uh, I was invited to be on a panel at Comic Con. I saw Bernie, and since I was finishing up a game, I was looking for new work. Uh, I saw Bernie's name on the email thread for this panel, and Bernie saw my name, and, and we only said yes because we saw each other's name. Really? I almost didn't go to that panel, and Bernie didn't. Wasn't it's like go. an arranged marriage. Yeah, we uh, we definitely the right things kind of worked out to, to what we have now. So what you're saying is you were actually fanboying one another, in how how it all hooked up? Yeah, pretty much. That's, That's awesome. That is. That is very convenient. So. You started a new series with Rooster Teeth. Yep, that's right. Red, red yellow, white. <laughs> we we keep messing it up. Red, white, it. red, white, black, yellow, which yes. spells Ruby, if you can pronounce it that way. Mm -hmm. Ruby? Yeah. It's uh, it's our new animated show. Uh, we just showed the first episode yesterday, and uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, I, I, I like the reception. I think people are responding to it well. It was a lot of hard work for a lot of people. It seems to be a really ambitious project. Uh, yeah, yeah. To build your own world, it certainly is. Um, the four trailers which I had kind of done uh, over the last few months were alongside the, the episode that we just aired yesterday. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Did you actually have to pitch um, pitch Bernie on like, hey, I want to do my own show, or did he come to you? Or somewhat. Uh, after about three seasons of Red vs. Blue under my belt, um, which he's already said he has no sympathy for anyone that whines about doing it for a long time. <laughs> um, he he, uh, I had started kind of coming up with this notion of, a, of an animated show. I'd I had done a lot of R and D for how to deliver the show over the past five years, just on and off, just doing tests and renders and such. And then the, came up with a concept for the, the, the theme of the show, at, you know, somewhere somewhere between consciousness and I was like half asleep, but I, I'll, I'll align those letters to mean what they are. It's a t color scheme I like, red, white, black. I have black. that subtle impression, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I was able to kind of, a lot of finagling goes on with the show where I align the right elements and it just somehow works. Uh, and so once I had a complete idea, I started kind of picking Bernie's brain. You could probably track back to a, a certain podcast where I'm kind of like quizzically asking and very coyly, just so Bernie, like, what do you think of this? What have you, like, what is, would a show like this kind of fit with us? And then came a day where I just, I came up to Bernie and just kind of threw a concept at him and he said it was, that sounded awesome. Uh, from there on, it was just like, well, it, 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 we, we knew it was going to happen. One of the things I really like about uh, watching shows online is they're not limited in length. I mean, if you're watching something on TV, it has to be 22 minutes if it's a half-hour show, 48 minutes if it's a one-hour show, yep. whereas your episodes can be as long or short as they need to be to tell a story. That's right. Is that something you find a, an advantage or a disadvantage with, with doing your online animation? I, 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 I think it is an advantage where you, where you still aspire for conventional storytelling. Uh, you know, that are what they are for certain reasons. But yeah, it's an advantage we have that we don't have to adhere to those conventional storytelling means. Uh, sometimes things are better in shorter form or longer form, depending yeah. on how, how like how you want it to be delivered. Like these days, we have uh, you know trilogies or things that extend beyond trilogies because we realize the story is so much larger than a single movie. And the better format for that might be a, you know a television show. And it's like the the, 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 the lines between these these mediums get blur blurred very easily yeah. these days. And so. Uh, I think there are certain movies out there that it would have been better as a 10 minute YouTube clip. You know, that there's just as much good stuff in that one movie that could have been boiled down into 10 minutes. Uh, so like maybe that's the right format for certain things. Uh, you know, as far as for Ruby's concern, it's like we, we were able to take the message we want to tell and do it in a concise fashion that uh, one of the things most animes are very bad for is just kind of droning on and on about their message when it's like you can really get to the point not waste everyone's time yeah the red didn't even have any dialogue with that's the trailer right. I thought it was beautiful that's right it was just it was really just a concept piece mm -hmm. as we discovered her character and kind of found our way while discovering new art and uh, we still kind of discover the art of the show as we make it and that we uh, we essentially we, we discover a lot of the show as it goes along and um, we then 
figure out. We have we've thus thus landed on a number, and even that number isn't certain of what the episode length should be. What was your biggest inspiration behind the show? Because the trailers alone just blew me away. The the biggest inspiration, honestly, is kind of like. I mean, the, there's a long, there's a long version, a short version of what I've wanted to make. The long version is I've had scenes in my head for years and years and years upon, uh, upon wanting to make films. Uh, far before I was ever animating, I just wanted to. Make, I had scenes in my head. Um, and then on top of that, the short story is last June I came up with a set of characters and a set of rules and a set of weapons and a, set, and a world and, and, and a level of technology. And now I'm taking the things I've wanted to make and making them fit into the show that we now have and so like I have concepts and ideas for sequences from 6, 8, 12 years ago. Well I'm looking forward to watching this show in the whole because when I looked at it it was like all my favorite parts of Sucker Punch without uh-huh. the horrible <laughs> Well that's definitely <laughs> one of the movies that I think could last, could be 10 minutes long. Yeah. yeah. That's it was a lovely concept yeah. it didn't really need to be. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I thought that's what Sucker Punch should have been that's what I was expecting and now I get to actually watch it so I'm kind of excited because just the action and scenes and trailers alone I was so cool but let, that was it that's all it took for me awesome he's easy though I'm very easy I'm also a very cheap date so that's it all just goes hand in hand what can I say so am I well thank you so much thank everybody you. stay tuned watch it you're going to really enjoy the show thank you uh, so what's your name Russell oh not Death Onion no oh, are you yes. sure are you positive <laughs> your name isn't Death Onion because you seem I, to have a form of legal ID there that suggests it is I, I'm confused you're confused? Yes. So, um, tell me about your favorite line you've waited in at RTX. This one. Really? What is this a line for? Joel. What makes this line more special than any other line you've been in so far? It's Joel. <laughs> really? It's Joel. It's, so, I, don't, I was just wondering though, I mean, like, do you end up bonding with other people in lines? Are there lines where, like, the concrete is a little softer? <laughs> Not this one. Not this one? No, What's the longest you've spent in a line so far? I wonder if it's yeah, registration. That was ungodly long. And how long was that about? Two hours? About an hour and a half, two hours. Hey everyone, Gavin here with Fanboy TV. Hi, I'm Chris Rachel, also with Fanboy TV. Hi, I'm David with uh, Nightlight Interactive, working on the title Whispering Willows. He is not with Fanboy TV. Uh, no, unfortunately. He no. probably will wish he will by the end of the interview, though. <laughs> so, Whispering Willows, describe it for people... Because like, I didn't even remember what the U- Oya, how, how do you say it? Ouya. The Ouya little console was. So and I was actually on a video recently where I was correctly pronouncing the name of that. So. Well, yeah, I'm going to mask it <laughs> the whole time, so we'll just keep a little counter. You know, it sounds like something you should be doing to someone, like, hey, I'm going to Ouya you later, and yeah. you're going to like it. Ouya. <laughs> I think it's like, Ouya. Oh, is that? Yeah. I'm so bad at any of those sports-related things. I don't know. So tell us, tell us about it. Sure. Uh, so the, the development on the console, or just in general? Do both. <laughs> Surprise us. Sure. Uh, so Whispering Willows is uh, a poor puzzle game, and you play as a girl named Elena, and she's able to astral project her spirit. And uh, you basically, the main gameplay, you control both her human form and then her spiritual form um, to kind of help each other get through the game. Um, so there's the game, uh, as the spirit, you're able to talk and see to other ghosts in the mansion. And you're able to basically, you, when you help them, they'll in turn kind of help you get through this mansion. Um, so I started developing for the Ouya back. I, I was one of the original backers of it. I thought it would be uh, kind of a cool new thing. I, right now, everyone on my team has full-time jobs, so it's yeah, definitely just a passion project for us. And one of the big problems in the game industry is when you're around my age, early 20s, it's it's hard to initially get into the game industry. And a lot of my friends, very, very talented artists, composers, sound engineers, you know, we have someone for everything. That We're all having trouble finding work. And so when the Ouya, when I saw the Ouya, it came up as a great opportunity. Let's form a team. And with kind of the excitement, you know, we can finally have a title that's going to be, you know, a launch title or out quickly when it comes out and kind of ride that hype and that's what we've done and it's been fantastic for us here's my question you picked to develop a game for a relatively new console that's very up in the air why did you choose that instead of doing like Microsoft Xbox Live or PlayStation Network well the thing is with Ouya 
they've been working they, they work really hard to get the indies noticed so if anything it was a great publicity thing for us because not only was there there's all this controversy you know surrounding it uh, but then also the company has just been fantastic working with us to get videos up and published they you know they, they sent out stuff when we were doing our Kickstarter to get people to Kickstarter fund us and so just a great great partnership with the company whereas a bigger company Nintendo Microsoft Sony you're really you're down here and struggling just for them to even look at you so it really they treated us like kings hey everyone we're here with a famous Wampa hunter what's your hey. name dude oh I'm Lewis hey Lewis hey don't Snooks Snooks hey. Snooks so how hard was it to actually kill and skin that wampa? Well, the moment I got a time off, it was kind of like, <gasps> so I was just like, got the time off, go inside and you just rip the skin from there. Did, is it good eating a wampa arm? Well, wampa, wampa meat's kind of, kind of raw. Over here is gamey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of chewy. You, you cook it well enough and it kind of tastes like kangaroo. You know, I've heard better. that if you actually dice it really fine, you can actually substitute it for aki tuna and sushi. You can. Um, no, you're going to have, the, you have to have a bit of avocado in it though. That's Otherwise true. it kind of ruins it. I had chocolate covered deep fried one, but it was absolutely delicious. Oh, You'll eat anything as long as it has chocolate on it. Bacon oh, I as well. Bacon and chocolate. You gotta have caramel. Caramel. You guys call it caramel? Oh, yeah. but I have caramel. to totally try that. You mix it with the caramel and then you... I, I, this is this is kind of like a hidden secret for Australians and that. But you get you get the wampum meat, mm -hmm. you cook it like a steak, medium rare. You want it to like kind of scream when you poke your fork oh, in yeah. it. And then what you do, get a salad, some lovely chips. We call them chips, you have french fries. Whatever. Yep. We like to cut French people up really thin and fry them. Ex exactly, so, yeah. exactly. And also, you make wampa fries. Did you know that? Really? Is yes. that just out of the fat? Yes, but you keep a little bit of the fur. It's kind oh, of gets extra, okay. extra texture. Well, here's my question: Do you have to kill a wampa by cutting off its arm? Because that seems to be thing everybody. No, that's the easiest. That's the easiest way to skin it. That's the easiest way to skin it. The easiest way to kill a wampa is to get it, put it in a cage, and then take it to a nice warm area like Austin. Nice. Yeah. So I see that you're actually wearing. The mo I'm assuming this is your most recent. Oh, this is this is this is this is my prize. My prize. Mm -hmm. This is the best wampa I've killed. Uh, I noticed that it's not actually dripping blood down your body while you're here. Is that out of respect for Austin culture? Because most Wampa hunters that I've seen really like to make sure that everyone understands that, like that gathering. Oh no, no, no! I'm, I'm, an odd wampa, I'm, a, I'm an odd Wampa hunter in the sense that I have OCD, mm. so I can't have the blood on me. So I just uh, drink it first, and then I then I. Then do I you actually have urinating straight blood when you do that? Oh no! It, it goes into the system. So I have, I'm part Wampa now. Every time I do that, I do that it's like I'm a freaking vampire, man. But it's good if you get a Wampa enema; it just makes it even quicker. That well, is good to know the next time I go Wampa mm. hunting. Wampa Animus, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this interview now because I don't think we can get much better than Wampa interview Animus. Yes. Wow. Well thank you, Lewis, and best of luck on your next hunt. Good luck with that. Hello! Now I'm Chris Rachel Ozen with the Austin Post. And I'm Gavin Stone with Fanboy TV. And we are here with Bernie Burns of Rooster Teeth. Hello! And you are in for an exciting interview. Why? Because it's with Bernie Burns. That sets a really, really high level of expectation. Oh, hey, sorry I'm late. I got, oh, no worries. I had no guardian to walk me through the hallways. So oh. I got kind of like jammed up and stuff like that. So. Yeah, are you suggesting that people would take one look at you and go, we must touch your beard? So, the, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> the match so he just took his badge off, so it's all right for you guys. Oh, to well. Off, the, the I leave my badge on as a... It's a pride thing. She just won't do anything with it. Oh, it's a branding thing? But yes. Yeah, I get it. Because we're being very subtle with where we're sitting right here. Absolutely. We wouldn't want to lose the messaging. Yeah. We, we thought tell me people reporting. won't really have any idea where we are. It's the black leather. You can get that anywhere. You can. We could be at like an Ikea showroom. Probably. That's true. Welcome to the Ikea showroom with two men with beards. <laughs> Mine's only half a beard, though, because I can't grow a full beard. I'm really jealous of your beard. Just what like, is, is it, like, the, the patchy, or you just, like, no, you get to a length and then like stops? No, this is, like, six months worth, dude. My, my father I can can't grow, grow a hair, hair mustache. What is, does your hair do the same thing, like, gets to a level and just stops and stays yeah, there forever? Much, really? Yeah, pretty so, All right. this is it. And I work around a whole bunch of guys, sports guys, who have, like, thick beards, and I'm, like, baby beard. I'm like, I don't want to be baby beard, man. <laughs> I want to be full beard. That's I why know. you had to sit that far away from him, because if he was too close to you, the envy would radiate yeah, off yeah. of him. Listen, I want to tell you, I shaved this down. This is like this is oh, like I'm my so, B game, honestly. I'm so jealous. So anyways, one of the things I've been wondering about Bernie yeah. is 
Your 10th anniversary was a really big deal. Yep. And now that you're on year 11, are you looking forward to just phoning it in and slacking for a year? Well, yeah, that's like the thing. You get to the top of the roller coaster hill, and then it's like, you enjoy this, the ride down and the descent into hell, basically. So is it just going to be taking old animations? Like, I don't know, just literally get on your cell phone and redub it. No, this is just on an individual basis. I'm just going to completely slack off. I don't have people that work for me that they can, like, pick it you up and run with it. You have minions now. Yeah, it's like, they get, like, burned out after three years, and I was like, hey, I did it for nine years i got burned out after nine you you can go another four or five years you got that in you i know you do you're even younger than i was so no big deal so you kind of you seem to speaking of gathering minions there's a couple people here i've heard at exciting rtx a couple being like i don't know around ten thousand or so yeah so we sold uh eight thousand tickets Mm pre-sale and then we tried to sell anything that we had left over at the door like for any kind of like people could make it to town or cancellations and things like that it was uh it was a pretty hot item by the time we opened the doors i mean there was no way to get in there were people who lost badges and we couldn't replace their badges because we just didn't physically have them well wasn't first year like 300 and then your second year 4,000 and now 8,000 plus yeah yeah so the first year was about 600 almost like 550 uh, and we had it like in a hotel ballroom. And then the following year, we stepped it up, got the convention center. We went from about, about 600, 550, 600 to uh, 4,000, and then from 4,000 now to 8,000. Um, so basically, so what 10 years, we're going to be 1.5 million. I was going to say by 2020, yeah. you will be the city of Austin. <laughs> Pretty much. We would hope. You know, actually, the thing we're looking at is so we put on the roadmap and we're looking at it. Um, we're now actually considering the size of the convention center as a limiting factor mm-hmm. in the whole event. Because the gaming space is just getting bigger, you know, people are watching more and more content online, so it just seems like the growth potential for this is amazing. Uh, we've managed to double every year so far, so we're actually worried. And about with two, that's almost enough to, to make a point on a graph. It is. It is a line, you know. And in fact, that first year it's like this. Whoop, that's so true. it's like, I guess we're kind of tapering off. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's, slacker. We're bad at math, so it doesn't matter. Well, I, I think you'd have to it, it come experience this because you can't get the waiting in line experience watching online. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Are you guys? Have you guys been waiting in lines? Uh, been waiting we in actually lines have to interviewed people stuff. in lines. So, yeah. so you wait in lines to buy stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So we should. We, what we need to do is we need to extend the experience where you can wait in line online. So yes, people understand. Like a queue just to watch would be awesome. You know, we make jokes, but there's actually places where you can go to do that online. It's the like, DMV here in Austin, actually. Mm-hmm. They have an online line. Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, I had to get my driver's license recently. And you go online to get online? Yes, I did. Wow, that it is was fantastic. It was like I was living in the 21st century. That's Yay, hilarious. technology! Yeah. So, <laughs> since you are such a known slacker, what with only running this entire company and whatnot, uh, what made you decide that what you needed in addition was to collect all these minions in one place and have your own giant convention? It's another facet of our laziness in that we were going to 8 to 12 conventions a year. And then and we you're had like, the, screw that, come to us. That's exactly right. Why go all over the country eight to twelve times a year when you can have one event and everybody comes to you? That's a I smart approve. way to do it. That's thinking with smarts. That's mm-hmm. what that is. Um, so about what is this costing the company a year? Are you actually you know, making money off of it or is this sort of a hemorrhaging cash for you? Uh I, Last year was we were looking to break even and didn't quite get there, so it was a promotional event. Yeah. Um, you know, but it is something with the trajectory and with volume. You do get a lot of efficiencies. I mean, last year we had a lot of special guests. Um, we didn't have quite the ticket head count that we did. Um, you know, we were trying to convince new exhibitors to come to a yeah. new show. They have a crowded calendar, too, so we had to convince them um, to do that. We had some really great partners that helped us out, uh, 343, Microsoft, um, some local companies as well. And so this year has been, you know, now that's an established event that's on the calendar, uh, people know what it is and know the value of it, and so it's really starting to take off. I've heard plenty of people, not just downstairs, say that they feel like this is a really good potential to be our PAX. Uh, would you agree with that? Although maybe we can't legally say PAX for yeah. that. We're going to bleep that out. No PAX. <laughs> oh, I, hope it's the next, I hope it's the next PAX. Well, PAX is an enormously successful event. Yeah. We've been at literally every iteration of PAX, going all the way back to in 2005 was the first one. Oh my one. god, the yeah. time! I know, it was, I mean, that was like... Eons ago! That was almost like the first one, was almost like in a hotel ballroom. Was it? Yeah, and you know, it was like one and exhibit hall. And now they're on two coasts. And now, next month, actually, we're going uh, down to Australia. They're opening PAX Australia. But it is, it, look, we're from Austin, you guys are from Austin. Yes. You know. 
that it's, you know, people always go, oh, we have to have a West Coast event, we have to have an East Coast event. It's like, what about the rest of the country? The great flyover zone, as I like to call it. Well, yeah. Well, Texas has, we have three of the top ten cities in the nation mm -hmm. in a triangle right here. Austin's right in the middle of all that. It's right. perfect. Yeah. So we try why to, do you think... We get away from Houston a little bit. <laughs> well, well, who can blame us? It's funny you say because there's always conventions in Texas, but they're like all over the place, and it's just nice to have... They should all be in Austin, is they, what we're nice saying. It's nice to have a central place, because I don't go to the east of the coast. I mean... I don't want to do that. Yeah. So well, now listen, I want to. I don't know if I agree with you on that. As someone who lives in Austin, every other convention can go away except for ours because I live like in a part town, like down by Zilker. It seems like every oh, other weekend there's a music festival, and I'm like in gridlock traffic. You know, I you could you live way up in Pflugerville and never have to worry about traffic. I could, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> You're right. That is an option that's on the table. Round Rock. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Georgetown. Yeah, yes. but then we have to travel into town. No, pick up no. Golf. He, he, ha he has a golf cart that is actually carried by a group of four people that are painted entirely gold. Right? Yeah, I you, read see that me, you see me around town. Yeah. It's a unique experience. Uh, well, so, I would just be one of those guys at one point in time. You're just not in good enough shape to carry his golf no, cart. No. Just watch Craigslist. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> always, yeah, well, always opportunities <laughs> coming up. Um, so, you are here in Austin, just as exciting. I, mean, I know that you all know who Fanboy TV is, really, much more than knowing who Bernie Burns is. Yeah. Why doesn't Austin know, know that Rooster Teeth is I'm here? I'm just a fanboy on TV. <laughs> That's all I am. Why doesn't Austin know that Rooster Teeth is here? Yeah. Good question. Don't know. I don't know. It's interesting to us, like, especially when we were going to PAX, that you know we could fill a 6,000 seat panel there. And, you know, we would come back home and it's like Austin was, you know, it was hard to get. Yeah, but it's getting better now because actually we decided that's on us, not on anybody else. Uh, so we're making a bigger effort, you know, we're trying to show uh, the city that we're one of the largest online video presences in the entire internet, on the entire web. And, you know, building this event and, you know, growing it and working with the city to do that, that just puts it on, on the map. We're not going to, you know, it's easy to sit back when we have one part of our business that is successful to just sit there and expect everyone to come to you doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, you know, you guys know that. You'll just yeah. have to make do with that whole international audience. That's yep. it. We're huge in Japan. Literally, we <laughs> knock down buildings. That's awesome. You're, you're like kaiju in Japan. That'd be, exactly. I, I can totally see that. You know and then what? we just march into the sea and wake us when you need us kind of a thing. I'll be waking up every weekend. <laughs> That's a fun show. Now, before we go... Do you have an evil, wicked tyrant laugh? That's true. We were, we were really like, hope. We will join you in this if you need. No, I, I, we I'll can give do, it a go. We can take it one turn. Take it in turns. Okay, so what do you, uh, what do you want? We're looking the, for like a the belly. The wicked, evilest laugh yeah. you have. You want like a, like a demonic possessed yes. by demons? Yes. That is well, enslaving I, other minions? He wants the demon thing. I want an evil overlord laugh. Yeah, like a super villain. Super villain. Like, so, this is your lair. I got a lot of these you laughs. I got a lot of these laughs. Okay? So Seriously, I want to make sure right. we nail it right. I want to get the flavor right. Okay. Something kind of demonic maybe Hellspawn in charge of an overlord of many different hellish minions yes. maybe marching into battle or just like every yes, day marching experience. into battle marching into battle okay yes. so I just want to hear him laugh at Hellspawn you. overlord lots of hellish minions marching into battle yes. ready alright yes yeah okay here we go I got this oh shot. my god I was sold <laughs> alright here we go ready from the diaphragm sir Monty I want your back up on this <laughs> I could totally see him in his office doing that every day. Oh, every day. Get to work. That's on Cash County Day. I think we should actually just turn that part into a Vine video and just have him tackling on it. <laughs> over and over. It might, might be the first Vine video I've ever watched <laughs> in that case. I waited all day for this ride. I know, right? Man, I've heard this was the best escalator here. Well, I guess we better just go find another line to stand in. Fine. Well, this, you could use the stairs. For <laughs> that. Please. Oh, <laughs> it looks hungry, Stonicus. Don't you think? Feed it. No, eat. It needs to eat. Look, it's so famished. You can plump back up. Being skinny isn't the most important thing. It does eat. have like a cardboard tag on it, too. That's probably its missing owner. I'm sad. Eat up. Maybe that's because its stomach is right there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>